All right, so today I am going to be doing a quick overview of the Nixie Tube watch that I'm building. Um, I know that there are some of these out there. There's not as many of them as like the standalone desktop clocks. Those are actually really quite popular. Um, but I wanted something of my own and I can't afford to buy one. So here I am making one. Now, obviously this isn't complete. Um, there's no strap. There's no basically nothing and it doesn't even work completely right now. But I thought that I would go ahead and explain what I've gotten done so far. I'm using IN17 tubes rather than IN16 tubes. I know that a lot of people who have built these use the IN16 tubes. And in hindsight, those probably would have been better, but they didn't really work with my design. Um, as you can see, I wanted to go with a more um, retro, like, unique look with all through-hole components, basically. Um, except for the one um, surface mount... Uh, inductor right here and um, and so I wanted to have the components on the outside because I thought that looked rather cool and I have not ever seen that before um, I think that electronics in themselves if done properly and built properly look really quite beautiful and a lot of the times they're just hidden away um, inside a phone or or whatever and you never really get to see them so I thought that actually wearing them around, um, you know, showing the electronics off and showing off how complicated it is was really quite quite a unique look, and I thought that I would really like it. Does it make it bigger? Yes. Um, does using through-hole components make it much bigger? Oh, yes, definitely. I mean, this thing is massive. But, I mean, if you're wearing glass tubes around on your wrist, you probably don't care. Um, plus, this is just just for me, so I, I really don't care. So the battery will go underneath here, and I'm actually going to be using these um, Nokia batteries from a cell phone, and they will go in just like that. So there will be one that's actually underneath the uh, watch itself, and then the other one is actually going to be on the wristband. So you ask, well, why do you need two? Um, ultimately, I decided that for the boost converter to be efficient, and also because I really, another thing that I haven't seen is I really like these digits to stay on constantly. Usually, if you see Nixie Tube watches, you press a button or you tilt your wrist or something, and the digits come on. Well, I would rather them just stay on, because if this is going to be mounted on my wrist like so, you know, I'm wearing around this huge random thing that basically nobody has any idea what it is. You know, it helps to have it on to explain what's going on. And the fact that the orange glow of the digits just looks so cool. Now, if I'm going to be able to get a full day out of two batteries, that would be great. But I'm not really holding my hopes up too high. I mean, I figure that the thing's on for probably, you know, a maximum of 12 hours a day. Probably, probably closer to, you know, 7 when it comes down to it. 7 to, probably 7 to 10 is probably more, more realistic. And, of course, I can just charge it every night. And, you know, for some people that might be an issue, but I don't care. Uh, I'm building this for me, not anyone else. I'm not, you know, trying to share the design or whatever. Um, if you want to get ideas from me, that's fine. But, you know, this is meant for me and to fit my own personal preferences. So this is really just an overview video of what I've done. In the next video, we will talk about um, how this started out life, um, you know, and a, and a little bit more about that. I'm currently actually 3D printing a Ninja Flex rubber piece that will fit over all the electronics and what I can mount the actual strap to because, as you can see, there's not really a mounting point anywhere. Um, We'll talk about stuff like that. Um, I'll probably also film some of me putting the final touches on this um, and actually getting it to work. Right now, it turns on and we get a 2 flashing in the second digit, um, which is exactly what I would expect. There is some problem. The 9 in this digit lights up, and it's not supposed to. Uh, I'm going to fix that at some point. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. It could be a bad transistor. Uh, I really hope not because these are just so packed in here. These are all through-hole transistors, by the way. And this is not a multiplex display. Yeah, that that's right. There are 20 trans individual discrete transistors for for the two tubes. So 10 per tube. Yeah, that's uh, that's a lot. It's not exactly an efficient design. But the thing is, I didn't have any money to work on this project at all. Uh, and unfortunately, I don't have like Patreon or anything like that. So I don't really have any way to fund my projects. So it's basically, what do I have in the scrap bin? And, alright, that really won't work, but I'm going to try it anyway, sort of deal, which is unfortunate because I could have made this look a lot different and probably a lot better um, 
for one thing, spinning, like actually getting boards manufactured instead of using Vero board um, or, or perf board or prototyping board or whatever you want to call it um, would have been a lot better. Also using surface mount components, this thing would have been a lot smaller if I had just used surface mount components. Um, and, and it would probably also be a lot smaller if I got smaller batteries. These batteries are huge. I mean, these are like regular cell phone size batteries, and these are way overkill. But again, this is what I have. I don't have any more. I don't have any money to go out and buy the components that I need to properly do this. Maybe sometime in the future, I'll make another one when I actually have money to spend on it. But since there was absolutely no budget for this project, this is what we got, and I think this will do just fine. I think that you know, for me, it's not. It's the personal. It's the idea of getting to wear around glass tubes all day. Is just kind of cool it's like really sci-fi you know you get looked at a lot at the time and you'll probably be asked by everybody that you see what is that weird thing that's strapped to your wrist and um, of course that is a very good opportunity to explain what you do and especially here on my channel I always like to talk about my channel to other people and promote it and this I feel like is a great way to start talking about technology um, especially with um, young children, because, if, I mean, I if you just, anybody will probably think this is interesting, but especially young kids who have never really been exposed to vintage electronics, um, like, you know, if you're very old at all, you know what vacuum tubes are, you know what VFD tubes are, um, you know, you know what all that stuff is because you are round, you know what VHS tapes are, you know, you know what eight tracks are and records and all this other crap, but, you know, kids don't really know what any of that crap is, and they sure as hell don't know what Nixie tubes are for the most part. Um, so, you know, there's not, I don't really know any kids that really know what Nixie tubes are that I haven't told. I mean, this, these are 50s technology, you know, so these are quite old and they're never really used in consumer grade electronics. So, this is a really, really good opportunity to explain you know, the history of them, and, you know, what electronics looked like way back in the day before we had all this modern crap and you could actually make a cell phone that fit in your pocket. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Join me back in the next video about this where we're actually going to do some construction and um, stuff like that, and I will probably at some point do a video where I go and walk around Walmart or something with this on and just see if people ask me what it is. So, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and have a very nice day.